of Light Summers. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to Munich. We are sitting here in the FSS Emperor 195, which is the sort of the next iteration of the Emperor Air lineup from um, what is it called? Flight Sim Studios, I think it is. Uh, so, as you guys know, they've previously released the 170 175 package and now they have released the 190 195 package. And uh, we want to give it a try on the channel. Um, as you guys know, this is an early access product. There's still about uh, a billion things in this aircraft which are not properly working. However, I I still think it's a pretty cool aircraft to fly. It's, it's kind of fun to fly. Uh, I really like the visuals and, and loads of other features on this aircraft. So we're going to check it out together on a uh, nice short flight from Munich down to Bologna in Italy. Um, but it's a very scenic route. Uh, passing over the Alps. Weather looks kind of decent, so maybe we, we are having some some very nice look on the um, yeah probably snow-covered uh, mountains down there. Looking forward to that. And um, yeah, before we get started with this flight, I want to mention uh, down in the right-hand corner, I believe it is. You can see my FPS, and it's running close to 60. Um, this is uh, kind of new on my channel. I've Previously, I've always uh, had locked my FPS to 30, since this is sort of the maximum constant FPS I could achieve with my system. But now, as you probably know, or most of you know, there has been this um, frame gen mod uh, released by someone for even older NVIDIA graphic cards. And uh, I installed it, uh, it took me a couple of hours. <laughs> To get it uh, running properly but now i think it runs good and it's a huge boost so i could yeah more or less double my fps and now i have it locked at 57 so just below my um, uh, monitor frequency of 60 hertz so 57 i think we can sort of maintain that for most part of the flight which is very very cool i hope there are no hiccups um, which are yet to be discovered uh, on my system after installing the mod i hope everything runs fine but uh, yeah we're just gonna check it out for today I'm looking forward to have a, a bit of a smoother um, simulator experience now. Right, and I think this covers everything for the introduction. Maybe uh, for sort of the um, Central European viewers among you, you will know Air Dolomiti for sure. It's part of the Lufthansa crew. But for th those of you watching from further away, you might not know it. It's a um, yeah, sort of domestic subsidiary of uh, Lufthansa, basically focused on uh, connecting um, in Germany to northern Italy, so uh, a couple of different cities um, in northern Italy where they are flying to, uh, mainly out of Munich and Frankfurt, I believe. So it's a small airline, um, but yeah, uh, I think it's a cool one. I like the livery. And um, okay, so this covers everything for the introduction, and now we will do two things. I will quickly kick off the boarding process. So we have the passengers coming in, and then we will actually fire it up from cold and dark together um, just to do the full flow. Okay, so here we are on the flight deck. Uh, FPS are coming down already a little bit, but um, never mind. Uh, before I forget, let's have a quick look here on the flight plan. It's a very short flight. Um, it's going to take us like 45 minutes maximum to get there. Um, let's quickly go satellite. I think it's nicer to see so we're departing Munich, climbing out towards the south, and then straight over the Alps, uh, pretty close to Innsbruck, and then into Bologna, which is down here. Um, so from Munich, I think active runway is 26 left, and then we will fly the Turbo 7 Sierra, I believe it is. Yeah, so that's the 7 Sierra um, 261. Then a pretty early turn after passing 1,900. Yeah, here we are after passing 1,900 left-hand turn into Ottenberg VOR onto Turbo. This is the Arnav overlay uh, giving us these constraints. At, I'm not quite sure if um, the aircraft will handle this one correctly. I don't think it will actually. So that's also one reason why I'm not flying online with this aircraft yet. There are hiccups to Welcome LNAV. That's for one, and also VNAV, which is known that this is not implemented, so it's... I think it's a little bit tricky to fly it online. If you're very familiar with the aircraft and uh, don't mind uh, sort of navigating on, on VORs and stuff like this, you can go for it flying online, but... 
Um, I will do this flight offline today. And then in uh, Bologna there's uh, one runway, so two directions. We will choose whichever one fits better for the wind. When we get a little bit closer we can see... Oh, IFR conditions at the moment. Let's check this out. Let's check this out. Uh, 320 at 3, 4000. Mist scattered 1000. Okay, low clouds. But 4000 should be fine. I guess for now we will plan runway 3-0 and if we get a bit closer um, we will see if this still works. Here in Munich it looks quite nice. 268-14. Okay, so it's a bit windy but uh, pretty much straight on the nose for the departure. Fuel clouds at 3,210 degrees. 1018 becoming 260 at 7. That's all fine. Nothing to worry about. Right. Um, so here we are. We can, since this is linked up with Simbrief, get the flight data in here. There we go. Add a Lomiti 8240. Check if this is. Okay. Yeah, so here we have the routing 106 passengers, cruise altitude 2990. And what else yeah and then we can do some departure calculations as well all right so let's fire up I think we have the external power available so let's do some flows first of all we need the batteries one and two then we will connect the ground power units in use so I do really like the flight deck sounds, that's uh, very cool indeed. This is coming to armed and non-smoking. Let's go fast and seatbelts as well. Let's pretend we are refueled. Nav lights are on, everything else is off. Um, electric pump, al pump alpha stays off for the moment. And this completes the overhead panel. Um, we said it's 1018, was that accurate? Yes, it was. Pulling this one over to the other side. Alright. So, that's uh, looking good. So then we can... Let's see how this works. I think somewhere in here... Maybe not. Uh, how do I? Ah, here it is. Flight plan request. Flight plan ID. Okay, let's. Oh, there it goes. I've just been hitting the wrong, wrong button. Flight plan received. Okay, that was quick. Um. It's not in here now. Okay, it's very cool to have it received, but where does it go? <laughs> where does it go? Ah, there we go. Now we got it. Okay, that's uh, not 100% intuitive, at least for me, but um, this works now, so we have this one in there. Um, so, we plan the departure runway 26 left, and we said this will be the Turbo 7 Sierra. 
Cool Boost 7 Sierra apply. Two Boost 7 Sierra to Turbo. Cool. Arrival, we will plan runway 30, which uh, has an ILS. And I believe now that's one issue where. Yeah, so that's one issue I've discovered on my test flight as well. So um, we don't really have this R enough transition, which I think is an aircraft bug. Um, so ILS 30. We have the transitions over Bologna VOR, but um, more realistically, we would fly these Luma 3 Whiskey transition. Maybe let's try it like this. Luma. Whiskey apply. So let's see how it looks on the flight plan. I'm not sure this is 100% uh, uh, as we need it, uh, but we will work with that for now. Uh, performance um, take off fuel. I believe this is going to be the um, take off fuel from the flight plan. So it's four, or I think that's actually block fuel 4718. Then we need to make sure to still load the aircraft. Just closing all the doors so we are not annoyed by um, all this beeping. Okay, yeah, so I, I wonder if we actually need to go into the uh, standard weight menu to have it set up. So fuel, we need 4718. Uh, ah, we're close, but not quite. 4792, let's go to the upper end of that. It's 4820 now, maybe that's even closer, that's 100 tons too much, 4730, that's quite good. And payload, we have a um, takeoff weight of 44.9. So we can take a bit more payload, 44.9. This looks good to me. Okay, other pages. Um, cruise altitude is gonna be 29,000. Cruise winds, we have 281 at 28. 281 at 28. And zero fuel weight, 40.4. That's a little bit off. Okay, whatever. Let's go with that. Um, and this is staying as it is. Okay, very good. Um, so that's performance. Departure limit. Speed limit V2 plus 10. Yeah, fine with me. Take off. And now we can do some calculations. Um, let's assume this is loaded from the aircraft, looks accurate to me, 2-6 left, conditions, try flap 2, this is fetching the weather and calculate, and then we do have the manifest over here, which is, um, takeoff center of gravity 19.4, flap 2 speeds 32, 36, 43, Trim 1.4, and this is gonna be a take of 2 flex 30. Apparently, we can send this over, which I'm not sure is working. Oh, something's up. Oh, cool. Okay, I did not see that coming. <laughs> That's cool, so if you send it over, everything is entered automatically, yet manually, so it takes a bit of time. There are the speeds. 
takeoff flex off that's you know, on. Ah, that's super nice. I've never seen anything similar in terms of implementation. Okay, are we all set now? Seems like it's complete. Crossweight 44, 489. And 32, 36, 41. Oh, that's 43 over here, my friends. Take of two, flex 30. Flex 30, take of two, okay. Climb, transition altitude should should be 5,000 if I'm not mistaken, out of Munich. Cruise, descent, uh, transition into Bologna since it's a short flight. Um, probably 7,000. Landing we will do later on for sure. Cruise, climb. Okay, do we have everything? Approach speed, go around limit performance data. Fuel required 0 0.1. I doubt this is correct. So, okay. management, fuel flow. I'm just looking around to get familiar with the aircraft a bit more, but uh, anyhow, I think I, I think this is good enough to get us flying. I would hope. Right, okay. So, let's continue with this setup. So we have a uh, runway heading of 260. Let's set this up in here. Two six zero like this. We have an initial climb clearance of flight level seven zero. So this is coming in here. Um, I believe we can arm NAV. LNAV is armed, that's good. And now, of course, we don't have VNAV, meaning the speed is always on menu. It's, it's not possible to flip it around to FMS speeds, which would be very cool. It would uh, help so much with everything, but um, we have it manual for now, so it's 167, which is... Wasn't it V2 plus 10? Well, it's not quite 167. Ah, whatever. I think 167, where, wherever this is coming from, I think it's quite realistic that works uh, good for us on the climb out. Okay, in the meantime, before we lose a lot of time, let's start the APU. There we go. And then we can run some... checklists which are somewhere yes yeah, so I'm just using a checklist I, I found uh, on the internet and okay power up checklist that's uh, behind us next will be the before star checklist um, let's get everything in place let's go for sterile flight tech I think that's quite cool just to have it there and um, fuel pumps are on auto this is all looking okay let's check the electrical page okay so APU is powering the aircraft that's very good so let's actually get ready for uh, pushback oh other services what other services 
Everything's complete. Okay, let's get the GP away and uh, the exterior equipment as well. Hello, Captain. We're ready for pushback. Okay, so before star checklist, pre-flight checks are complete. Uh, fuel quantity, we have 4.78 tons on board. MCDU is set crew oxygen. Let's not check, that's not even simulated. Um, altimeters are set 1018, 1018 and 1018. Flight instruments are set, so we have a heading 350, 350, 1480, 1480, that should work. And passenger signs are on and takeoff briefing is completed before start checklist to the line is completed. Walking gear. Okay, and then I believe we can put this one to RTO. And then we will very soon start the engine so red beacons or red beacon is coming on. Okay, transponder, well we're flying offline so it doesn't really matter, but let's go 1000 and T-A-R-A -A. and we are facing west on, yeah, let's go orange, I think that's Release the closer one. Please. Okay, off we go. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at will. Start at will, we will do that. Okay, before star check is below the line. Uh, Captain and first officer seatbelts are checked. Takeoff performance is set. We have done the calculations. You can also see it over here. Flex 2 and 1 of 83.9. There's even the 30 degree mark on there. That's really cool to see. Um, auto brake is RTO. Trim is set and centered. Um, well, we have not really looked at the pitch trim. Which is supposed to be, uh, where was it, over here, 1.4, 1.4, that's set. Um, doors and windows are closed and locked, beacons are on, transponders on, parking brake is off and engine start 1 and 2, we will do that right now, so open the guard, click start. And there's N2 rising. Oil pressure should be rising. There it goes. Yeah, it's a fully automated startup. Always kind of boring to have these uh, kind of engine starts, but it's kind of typical for a modern airliner. happening is GSX breaking my aircraft. Okay, everything looking good, oil temperatures rising as well. Okay, same procedure for number two, but this time we will look at it from the window. Tow truck disconnected. Bypass pin removed. Left is clear. Right is clear. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to direct your attention to the cabin crew in front of you. We will be showing our safety demonstration and would like the next few minutes of your complete attention.
Well, I, re I really do like the wing view on this one. Uh, the texture and modeling on the wing looks very, very nice indeed. Right, so we have two good engine starts. APU is coming off. Electric pump alpha is now coming on. Um, anti ice on this one is automatic. Uh, so the lights are off, but I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is uh, indicating that anti ice is automated. And then we will go flaps 2. And I think that's that. Let's run the after start checkers. Flaps are set. APU is off. Hydraulic system 3 alpha is on. Flight controls. Ah, that's the one I forgot. System flight controls. Full left. Full right. Full up. Full down. Oh, that's a little bit missing. And rudder full left and full right. That's checked. And taxi lights are coming on. And we are good to go. So taxi will be very easy. Let's put in some power. Yeah, nice sounds. And we will even take a shortcut, although that's not really calculated for. But um, yeah, so we are on Delta 3 Orange this one we are cruising on then we will go left take the Sierra 8 intersection and then we can actually go straight ahead onto Bravo 12 onto 26 left so it's a very convenient short taxi um, so we have not calculated for shortening but it's a small aircraft we light this is more than enough runway to get us airborne Right, and before I forget, looking at the flight plan again. Yeah, so here you can see that no speed or altitude constraints whatsoever implemented. And this is what makes it so dangerous to fly this aircraft um, on the network, um, since we would really need to pay attention. To, um, to all these constraints from the charts. So on this one we have a speed constraint of 210 knots for the initial climb out. I'm just thinking, let's bug it up to 196 actually. Let's go 196. Which I believe is sort of the uh, clean speed. And then from there we can uh, accelerate to 210 and then we are good for the climb out. Okay, in the meantime there's the TO config button which is down here. Take off OK. Take off OK, so we are all set. left hand turn over here okay so crossing the bridge now we would usually go on to the tower frequency fast but still okay yeah so now just straight ahead and then we are on the runway already very convenient stuff okay and since the approach is free we can set up for the departure landing lights strobes and we run the before takeoff checklist cabin is secure takeoff data is reviewed um, ECAS is checked. Brake temperatures, I d haven't double checked yet, but uh, they, they will be fine. Takeoff config is checked, we have done that, and, light and lights are set. 
so before takeoff checklist is completed. Right, so now we will hit the um, toga button and this will bring up takeoff over here which sort of arms the auto throttle. Now we will just keep it rolling and then we are off to Bologna. Okay, so power is coming up. See, auto throttle is uh, automatically being engaged and it's taking over. We are take off. And now it should climb up to 83.9 as, uh, as we've calculated. Rust told at okay, it's a little bit more than that, it even keeps climbing a little bit. Rotate, and now it keeps at this 10 degree until it's airborne. I think that's uh, even on design. Although it feels a bit of weird flying it. Okay, positive rate, gear up. Our oh, trim is way out, way out of line. I like the engine sounds. And something I like, look at this, if I'm uh, rocking the wings, I really like how they react to the airflow. It's really neatly modeled. Okay, let's stop doing this. <laughs> okay, we are above 1,900 going into the left-hand turn. I forgot the flight director so okay, There we go. Uh, flex one. Okay, and now, yeah, that was my bad. Uh, flight level change is what we need to keep the power up. Should have done this earlier. And now we can back up to 210 knots. Which is the limit, but I think only up until the next waypoint even. Okay, flaps up. Now, yeah, let's go autopilot and now we can even back up to 250. There we go. Alright, after takeoff check, landing gear is up, APU is off, and slats and flaps are up after takeoff check is completed. So we are on our way to Bologna and now we are potentially entering icing conditions. Um, but yeah, this is I think this is automatic. So if I put ice protection engine one, the white one, then this will be off, anti-ice switch off. So it's kind of this dark cockpit uh, philosophy. So if there's no light, then everything is good. 1000 to go, let's keep it climbing to cruise level 290. Right, line up the heading back. All right, folks, let's enjoy this wing view. And I would say that's that for the departure. Thanks for joining me on this one. And now it will only be very short cruise. And then we will hopefully have a nice landing into Bologna in just a bit. Enjoy.
hello folks as you can see we are getting closer to the clouds which means that we are um, already well into the descent um, flight level uh, 105 for the moment um, descending down to 7000 also slowing down to 240 right now and um, yeah as I've promised beautiful cruise um, <laughs> over the Alps uh, along uh, Largo di Garda sure what that's in English um, the famous lake and yeah it's a very very scenic stuff and uh, now it's one of these <laughs> I guess very very r rare days where the uh, weather in, in Germany is actually better compared to the weather in Italy but today it seems to be the case um, okay so we are below 100 um, let's do the landing lights and um, yeah so speaking about the arrival we will still go with ILS Zero, which is this one it's a 3.5 degree profile minimums um, 350 I still need to set this uh, remind me in just a second and we are so I was actually intending to fry the Luma um, for my uh, sorry three whiskey it is um, however this like it's it's not drawing like this on on the display whatever I do it's just it just offers um, these two transitions via Bologna VOR, which I really don't want to fly. Um, so still some some issues with the LNF system. Um, so what I've done now, I've selected the four Sierra, sorry five Sierra, this uh, Luma five Sierra, taking us on the arc, the 15 mile arc from Bologna VOR, and then into uh, onto the right turn Aplex, and then from Aplex on the um, ILS. Um, however, that's also not 100% uh, in here, so we can see we are going on the arc, but then afterwards it still wants to fly the Bologna transition, which is really weird. But we will of course um, find ourselves a nice uh, shortcut over there, not going the full way. Um, other than that, we have dialed auto brake medium, it's not a huge runway. It has although almost three kilometers, actually quite a bit. But you can see it's a displaced uh, threshold. Um, landing distance beyond glide slope is 2,181. So yeah, it's quite easy for this type of aircraft. But yeah, we will do auto brake medium, take one of those exits, Bravo or Delta most likely, taxi back towards the apron. That's the plan. Weather. Um, so 5,000 now, still a bit of mist, uh, 1,000, yeah, so not, not the best weather, but um, no issue in terms of minimums at all. Uh, speaking of which, I still want to dial this, which is 350 barrel. Minimums, there we go. Barrel. We are dipping below our altitude, that's not too good. Um, 350 is set there. Um, let's keep it descending a little bit. Let's go 4000. Flight level change. We will intercept the glide slope at 3000. And now speaking about the frequency, I am not sure if this is happening automatically. So we have a ILS frequency of 109.75. So even though that's auto, it's not in here. 109.75. Seven This is looking okay. Now, if I'm not mistaken, let's go FMS2 for comparison. So, if I'm not mistaken, in order to uh, select the, um, the course, I need to go to. 
heading for a moment because I need to switch over to um, VOR localizer. Oh, let's actually slow down a bit. 210 is what we want to go for now. Um, okay, let's quickly go heading. Now we go VOR localizer and now we can select the course of. 294 I'm not sure if we can otherwise um, capture the ILS on FMS navigation okay back to nav LNAV line level change Okay, looks good for now. I've kind of neglected, neglected the um, checklists. So let's run that now. Descent checklist, lights and seatbelt signs are set, altimeters are set, landing data is set. I have calculated a landing or approach speed rather of 139 and that's on a flap full. Speed, altitude, select, okay. Um, Auto brake is set to medium, just because I'm not super sure how well it brakes. Um, captain and first officer seatbelts is checked. Approach briefing is completed. Kind of, kind of uh, for the go around. We climb to 3.9 miles on the uh, localizer, and um, then a big right hand turn, climbing to 4,000, holding at with bow. And now you can see pretty soon we can. Oh, actually, now we can go direct Applex. Directs don't work well in this aircraft, so once again something we will need to do with the heading. Okay, let's turn right. Scrolling this one is super slow for whatever reason. Uh, 260, we will go down to 3000 with a um, vertical speed, not too steep, 750 will do, and then we will switch over to BOR localizer and we will wait for the, oh no my course is reset, why is that? Come on, 294 I need. 294, there we go. And then we will arm. The localizer will capture straight away. Oh, just in time, okay. Just in time. Let's go. Flap 1, speed checked. Flaps 1. Sorry for, for being zoomed in this much all the time, but it's, uh, it's way easier to read all these screens. Alright, looking good. Turning right on the localizer, this seems to work just fine. Exterior model is really outstanding. Outstanding, in my opinion. Okay, at 7.8, we should go down on the glide slope. So let's go flap 2. Speed 190. Let's even go flaps 3, then we can go a bit slower. Right, down we go. All um, go around altitude 4000 is set. 
Uh, let's do some lights now. Let's go low lights as well. It's quite quite dark now. Twenty five hundred is checked. This is a good time to drop the gear and go flaps four, and then once again find a one thirty nine. Why are we turning? I don't think we should be turning at this point, my dear aircraft. Um, okay, I don't like it. So now we are flying um, right over Bologna. <laughs> it's so mystic today. It's uh, really bad visibility, but this is actually quite beautiful coming over Bologna. Um, are we still on localizer glide slope? Okay, landing checklist. Spread ends and notified. Landing gear is down. Three queen flaps is full. Landing lights on. Landing checklist is completed. Um, forgot about this one here. But we can even use the hearts. Okay, now I'm just <laughs> waiting to break through the clouds. Yeah, there we can see some lights. Okay, we should be good. Wow, this is so cool. Okay, my aircraft. Oh, sorry, that was my bet. There we go. My aircraft manual flight. Let's see if we can bring it down nicely. Remember, it's a little bit uh, steeper glide slope of 3.5. Um, one knot of wind, so wind is really not an issue, which is nice. The flight director is moving off a little bit. I will focus on the parpies. Touchdown! Ooh, a little bit rough. Reverse. And decel. Manual braking, I'll forward. Okay, it breaks. Super nice. Alrighty. <laughs> Alrighty. Here we are. I think that was pretty much spot on the touchdown mark. Not the softest one, but. Uh, Spot on. Okay. Let's clean up, uh, bring up the flaps. I do hope spoilers have been extended. I'm not sure. But there's no arm position, so. Ah, uh, maybe. Ah, uh, maybe it's entirely manual spoilers. Could be. Could be, actually. But this is really hard to operate uh, from the flight deck. I don't have a lever for that. That would be very convenient in this case. Okay. Um, landing lights. Strobes. Um, let's fire up the APU. There we go. And let's see if Volanta has a touchdown rate for us. 330? Really? Ah, it didn't feel that bad to be honest, but okay. I guess we gotta trust Volanta, Volanta on this one. Okay, let's find a parking stand. So I've uh, looked up some recent flights and usually they go somewhere here on this apron, so 14, 15, 16, something like this. Let's see if uh, we can find a spot. Um, so 2, 
seen okay let's see do we have an after landing checklist we do lights are um, set flaps are up trim is four up and centered okay so apparently you put the trim four up which would have been a much better takeoff trim for us compared to the one point something we had and um, trim uh, sorry APU is started it completes the checklist GSX is right there Ah, there's a company in Brayer. Quite busy here at this airport. Well, it's all static traffic, of course, but still. A lot of, stairs of uh, static traffic. Right in front of the fire station. All right. Final turn for the day. By the way, this is a freeware scenery, which I picked up from Flightsim.to, but uh, high quality one. Nice. This should give us a dance. Park and brake. Um, APU is on and we can kill the engines. Right. So I believe um, pump alpha comes off again. The beacons. Uh, logo and nav lights can stay on and then we have the fasten seatbelts and sterile flight deck oh not even a dance that's disappointing very disappointing indeed okay shutdown checklist transponder is uh, not off now it's on standby um Chocks and brakes are set. Engine uh, off. Hydraulic pump three alphas off. Shutdown checklist is completed. Let's get all the engine covers. No, actually, we don't need this. And GPU, maybe. Okay, let's ask for deboarding. Deboarding requested. Let's request it and we will open the doors. Oh, I'm just seeing right now we are parked to another, next to another um, Emperor Air. What's that, the 190 maybe? Or also 195? Hard to tell the difference. Looks rather like a 190 in my opinion. But I don't know. Might be wrong. Um, yeah, so this completes flight number one in the Emperor Air 195. Once again, very cool aircraft to fly, still lots of stuff missing in order to have a really nice um, flight sim experience, but I really trust in, in this developer. I think they will make this aircraft very good eventually. And um, yeah, kind of disappointed with my touchdown rate there, it uh, was a nice approach, um, spot on landing. I was hoping for a bit of a smoother touchdown, but yeah, 330 bit of back pain for the passengers, but otherwise the aircraft is still intact after that one. <laughs> That's always good. Okay, so this completes uh, this flight in Microsoft Flight Sim. Um, very soon I will also bring bring up some more P3D content for a change. I haven't done that in quite a while, um, so stay tuned for this. And uh, as always, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.